Evolution of Flying Skulls. We may all have some familiarity with winged skulls, from Avenged Sevenfold's album covers to bikey shirts. However, for my science fiction, horror story, I am curious about how these creatures would actually evolve and develop. Body parts. These creatures would simply be skulls around the size of a human skull, although it doesn't necessarily have to be a human skull with wings attached to the back, and potentially a tail running perpendicular in between the wings for balance and control during flight. They would have limited muscle and flesh, aside from tendons controlling the jaw, their wings, and tail depending on what popular opinion says, I may close off the bottom of the skulls either with bone or flesh. Organs. All other organs would be internal, stored where the brain would be. As such, the brain will be smaller, and their lungs, stomach, and other organs would have to be quite small to habitat. Due to having no legs, and as such lacking an ability to land, these creatures would have to be perpetually in flight. As such, I am thinking of these skulls' habitat being around lava lakes and volcanoes, where the hot convection currents of gas could keep them afloat. Diet and reproduction. I would definitely prefer these creatures to be carnivorous, and not be afraid to attack a human explorer through biting their flesh off them. Aside from that, they could also attack insects, birds and other animals on the ground. Regarding reproduction, due to the difficulty in physical reproduction between these species, I believe releasing spores, sperm and eggs is the best way to go. A female could also release eggs, and a male could fly past and fertilize them. With all of these conditions in mind, how could such a creature evolve? Although it sounds fantastical, the interesting thing is weirder animals have evolved than what you describe that exist or have existed, there is enormous variety in life. We have starfish, we have octopuses, we have Cambrian-era exoskeletal animals. Evolution is the gradual result of many, many layered mutations over a very long time. The important principle is that there is no goal in evolution. Each gradual step is an optimization, random mutation that makes evolutionary sense at that time. So for your flying skulls you need to consider that at every step of the way, each evolutionary change must make sense and be an advantage at the time or the place it was made. Let's have a look at some possible scenarios to result in your flying skulls. First, you need to start with an animal, the easiest is either a bird or bat. They already have the structure and beginnings of what you require. Bat wings use elongated fingers with stretched skin for flight, whereas birds use the entire arm for feathers. Your final fertilization technique favors birds, as they already lay eggs. There needs to be a scenario where bodies become less important, and the spinal column shrinks. This could be an increase in social requirements through sexual selection. The brain requires an increase in size to obtain superiority in more complex mating procedures and defense against rival males, females. The increase in brain size also comes with an increased weight penalty, and thus reducing mass of the body may be required to offset increased brain size. Stability is not too much of an issue now, as bird tails for flight have uses. Perhaps the environment changes to trees and short flight scenarios where lengthy flight is not required. This seems to correlate with increased social structure happening in smaller environments. The spinal column, once shrinked needs to then disappear almost completely, and organs move to inside the skull. Again, sexual selection is your friend here. Perhaps there is more protection by incorporating vital organs within your skull, so mates are chosen that appear to have this advantage. Natural selection could also favor stronger exoskeletal structures with organs located within skulls, with those that don't not surviving. Your flying skulls are thus evolved. It is important to note that residual structures would still exist, after all we have all evolved from fish so our embryos would form still like fish, just in later gestational periods the spinal column would be less and less important such that, like an appendix, it remains there in a redundant form at the back of the skull. For look and appearance these are mainly sexual selection traits. Humanoid skulls with bilateral symmetry and humanoid features could be desirable from sexual attractiveness throughout. 